Um, this here is a geode that I did on a t-shirt a while back. I did it as an ice die. And we're going to just do something similar. I'm going to have a couple of the big geodes on the tapestry. I'm doing a tapestry that's 54 inches by 56 inches, one of the Sunshine Joy tapestries. So I'm going to put a couple big ones and then I'm going to fill in some small ones. And then I also mentioned heart sprinkles. So what I'm going to do is just put a, use my stencil and put a few small hearts on the tapestry too, just for a little bit of fun. So what we're going to do to start with uh, I have a tapestry that's been soaked in soda ash, it's been spun out, and then I've e even left it sit out for just a little bit because it, I just wanted it to just be barely damp. Uh, normally I like to let them dry before I dye them, but since we're doing this live, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just tie this up and, and get it dyed. But this is going to be a long video, so you guys can come back. Uh, eventually I am doing a, another recording up here with my other camera so after this here is all done and processed and washed out then I'm going to go ahead and put a shorter version of just how to tie the tap and we won't have all the questions answered but I'll leave both versions up so you guys can watch whichever one you want so okay so it looks like we have more people joining uh, we got David and Jeff and Beth and Barbara and Todd and Jason Sky and Christy so hello 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 thank you for joining me today and it looks like we have a total of 37, 38 watching right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing, like I say, we have a tapestry. It's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out. And then what I'm going to do is put uh, just a few hearts in here. It's something that you can add, you know, little details in later. But I just want to have a, an idea of where I'm putting everything. So what I'm going to do is just draw a few hearts on and then it's something that we'll just uh, tie up as we go. So I'm just going to draw these in. Well, let's get a straight edge going first. So when I'm adding hearts in, I'm just drawing half a heart in and then we'll tie that up geode style. But I'm also going to do the regular geodes like you saw on the t-shirt. So I'm just using my template here just because it's quick and easy for me to draw little hearts that are nice even shapes. So so let's see, let's start our big geode over here. So I'm just kind of going to put one in one corner and then I'm going to go diagonally and I'll put the other one over here in this corner and then just fill the rest in with whatever here. So if you're going to start the geode at the bottom, what I like to do is just kind of draw just a little bit of a, a general shape in there to kind of start with. Just so that you know kind of how your geode is going to fit in here. And I'm not doing an exact fold on this. This just kind of gives me a general idea just to make sure that I don't, I don't want to have a, a round bullseye type of geode. I want it to have a little bit of weird shape to it like a, a stone would have. So once I have that done, then I'm going to just kind of pick this up and I'm going to just start kind of doing just a little bit of a pleated fold here. Just kind of gathering this up in the, the shapes here that I drew on here just to kind of get it going. If you pick it straight up like this here, then that's where you're just going to get round and you can you can certainly do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I like mine to look more like stones though and they usually have a little bit more shape to them. So that's where I like to start with kind of a a weird shape on here to go for, go with. And then I like I say I just you can kind of do some of your pleating down here on the table. I'm just kind of doing just a quick gather on on this and then I'll pick it up and just kind of work more of them in. So I'm just kind of lining this line up all the way around here. And you don't have to draw a line. You can just go for it, right? Uh, just pick it up and just manipulate it how you want it. And that's how we'll do the top one since we're going to start from the point. So I'm just kind of gathering that all up here in my hand and just trying to put that line all on an even run. And that'll be our first tie that we do is right along that line. 
Okay. Once I have that done, then I try to kind of pull that up a little bit, smooth this out a little bit there, just so that it's not a complete big wad there of fabric. And let's see, yeah, there's my sinew pool, a, a, a nice dowel of some sort. This one here I got from Nikolai Saving. Uh, he still sells them, and it has a little port on the end where you can do the fast speed with your, or fast wind. Um, but anything that you can wrap sinew on and then hold nice and tight in your hand is going to help with these uh, geode type folds just because you're going to do an, a lot of pulling and trying to pull sinew by hand you're going to end up cutting into your hand that way so I usually will just start down here at the bottom if I'm doing a start at the bottom I'll just wrap around the bottom here around where my line was and I'll usually wrap a few times and kind of give it a pull and then I tighten it a wrap around a few more times and then pull it nice and tight and whenever I'm pulling I'm making sure that my arm is going to go back so if this here breaks my arm is going to go back behind me uh, I have done it once where I pulled and I was pulling straight up like this here and it broke and then I end up punching myself in the face so that's just one thing to be aware of when you're doing the sinew pulling is that you want to just have good pull where you're pulling straight away from you or you can pull the other direction and I'll pull it out this way hold with one hand and then pull straight out from me so if it breaks my hand is just gonna straighten out like that the other thing when you're pulling away from you if you run the sinew under instead of over if you run it over the dowel then that pulls into your hand you run it under and it's just more comfortable so just a matter of finding which way works the best for you and I've also seen some people that they'll use a, a big broomstick and they'll put it down on the ground where they can pull you know hold it with their feet and then pull up like this here so yeah you just got to get creative and find what works the best for you so the next thing that I'm going to do now I got that one tied on there so I'm just going to go up you know about an inch or so and I'll usually vary the distance in here sometimes I'll do little skinny ones and I'll do wider ones and that just is going to give you a little bit more shape than within your different things where you have some skinny some fat and you can see how I kind of have this odd shape here so geodes are fun because you just get to kind of randomly play with it and they usually come out pretty awesome. So I'm going to tie another loop on here and I just I usually will kind of play with my fabric a little bit here and just kind of scrunch it up in different ways and that just gives me some more shapes that show up then within each one of the rings of the geode. So I usually wrap just one or once or twice and kind of pull just to get some of the slack out. And then I wrap it around a few more times and pull it again. And that's going to help ensure if you have it wrapped, I'd say at least six to eight times around there, then you get a, a decent white line on there. And the other thing you can do as you're going up, you can pull some parts of the fabric out. So what I'm going to do is just kind of wrap up and around this here. And what that's going to do is give me a separate little piece within the geode. So you can see how I have this big geode here and then I got two different parts on there. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just adding another little kind of weird shape into the geode. Well, there's another one of my Andera crystals. So I'm just wrapping that around and like I say that just kind of presented itself. The fabric was kind of bunched up there so I just pulled a little piece of that out and then I'll just wrap that up just like I'm doing the rest of the geode. Wrap it a few times and just pull that tight. So after I wrap out to the end of this here then I just did just kind of a little bit of a wrap brought it back down here to the center point so that I can continue on now with my geode going out here. So we're just going to keep wrapping this up and I guess I didn't make that quite as big as I thought so 
I'll probably end up doing three or four geodes on this tapestry here. Okay, so we're just about done with this geode, so then I'm just going to move <clears throat> over and start on a new one. And like I say, I'm going to switch back and forth between starting at the bottom and coming out to the end, and I'm going to start the next one at the tip and then work my way down. So whenever I finish a run, though, I usually like to kind of bring it back down. I don't like to try to finish it off right at the very tip here, because if you pull too hard on those tips, then you can stretch the fabric and it'll leave just kind of like a little bump that doesn't want to go away. So I'll bring it usually back down to one of the bigger ones, wrap it around a few times and give it a nice pull to tighten that up. And then I like to cut mine and I tie a little bit of a knot in the end of the string. It just makes it easier for knowing which ones I'm going to unwrap. And then also when I'm grabbing that with my wet hands, that knot is easy to get a hold of to start unwrapping this. So there's part of my geode right there. So I guess this will be as good as time as any to tie up some of these hearts. So I'm going to just do up a few of these heart sprinkles and they're going to be like little geodes themselves. So for this here I'm going to actually do the little fold in half and pleat it and go up that way. my hearts here and here I think I'm just going to start my big geode right here so what I'm going to do to start with is just pull up so this here this one I started at the bottom this one I'm going to start up here at the tip so I'm just going to do kind of a reverse action of gathering the fabric up and like I say if you pick it up just straight like this here and tie straight down you're going to get kind of concentric rings if you want the more of the shape then as you go down you'll just need to adjust your fabric here so that's kind of what I'm going to do here is just adjust this a little bit get some of these creases pulled out just the way I want them and then I can just kind of scrunch up that center part a little bit just to give me a little bit of thickness there because like I say if you if you try to pull too hard on just a little tiny tip you might stretch the fabric out that won't go back so I like to have just a little bit bigger of a tip there. So I just kind of wadded that up. Hopefully you can see how that's wadded there. So let's see here. Yeah, that works. Okay. And why do you do it reversed? You're, are you meaning starting from the top instead of the bottom? Uh, there's just different ways of tying it up and I like I have done it both ways so I thought I might as well show both ways on here just to give people more variety so once I do my first tie then I'll usually kind of do more of that scrunching up so I'll just add some little bits of extra fabric there and scrunch that up and then just put another ring in there so you can just kind of and then you can also work in a direction here so I do have like a heart down here and I got another one over here so I'm just going to kind of try to fill up this whole corner with the geode so I'm just going to kind of gather fabric up from all the way around here and just fill up this whole space so sometimes those starting from the top is more interesting because I do I think more of this gathering here where I'm intentionally trying to shape the geode and making sure that I don't have too many layers that are wrapped tucked all the way on the inside there so I just keep adjusting it and keep wrapping it up okay uh, 
Uh, it, yeah, the purpose of reversing, I do think the geode is different. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to dye these two in just a little bit different colors. I, I think my overall scheme is going to be brown and green. But I think in the one that I start from the top, I'm going to add a little bit of purple in this one. So that when we're done, you'll be able to look at both geodes and see which one I tied from the bottom and which one I tied from the top. And you can then judge which way you like, like it or you can try them both for yourself. That's always fun too. You don't have to use sinew for doing the sinew or for doing the geodes, but if you want the lines in there, the white lines, then the sinew is what does that because you're able to tie it extra tight to get those those lines in there. What, what we're doing is tying it so tight that the dye can't get underneath, and that's what leaves the white lines. But if you just want just the, the shapes in there, you can see some of my lines here don't have white lines. So you'll get more of these type of shapes. You just won't get defined lines. But you can tie it up. I've used a kite string to tie it up. And that's something you have to do a couple wraps, tighten it up, a couple more wraps, tighten it up. Um, I've also used uh, dental floss some right here I think yeah so I've used dental floss and that's something that uh, is stronger than the kite string and you can do the same thing the dental floss I have got some white lines from those so you can build up enough layers just wrap a couple and like I say tighten it as you as you go and then wrap a couple more layers and tighten it so sinew is not an absolute requirement I try to make sure that there's many possibilities and explain the differences of why I use the things so that people can explore. Because I want to inspire people to try things but not have to go out and buy all kinds of stuff. I mean some things you just you have to buy if you want it to look the same but um, you can still do this, these designs just not with all the same effects. I hope that answered that question. Because I have used sinew but can never get the lines to stay white. What am I doing wrong? Uh, it's not really a matter of what you're doing wrong. It might just be that you're not pulling them tight enough. One of the other things I found that helps when I'm doing the uh, sinew and I want the white lines is if you start with it a little bit damp, then you're basically trapping just a little bit of liquid under there and that helps even more keep the dye from wanting to squeeze under there. So I think it's a matter of pulling tighter and starting with your, your t-shirt or your tapestry just a little bit damp. And then I think you might have some better results. And like I say, the pulling, that's I think what it really comes down to is getting it tight enough. And when I want a white line, I make sure to have it wrapped around there six to eight times. But I'll do two or three times, pull it tight, take some of the slack out, wrap a couple more, and then I pull it really tight, and then I can kind of feel it cinch in here under my hand as I'm pulling. And then I'll wrap two or three more times and pull it tight. So it's just a matter of how tight you pull it and how many times you have it wrapped to get a nice border there for the die to not be able to creep underneath. So, but it does, it does take some work. And if you don't have enough strength in your hands to pull it that tight, like I say, I have seen people that have rigged up a system where they were able to uh, put it either on the ground or into a, I'm not sure, somebody had some sort of a mechanism where it looked like they could push down with their feet and hold the thing. So there are people that are finding other ways of getting it tight enough. The main thing though, if you're pulling, pushing with your feet, is you have to be more careful about breaking it or maybe you get a, a stronger, this here is 70 pound uh, sinew, but I know they make it even stronger. Uh, so yeah, it's just a matter of finding a way to get it pulled tighter. Oh, and thank you, uh, 
Dragon Tears of Love for answering that question. I, it's really nice, but I see other people jumping right in there and helping if they know the answer to something. Let's see. Oh, I jumped down here. I'm not sure where I'm at on my questions now. Okay, when you are first starting, your shirts don't turn out good enough to wear, what do you do with the rejects? Uh, those, I'll usually, if they just don't have enough dye in them, I'll tie them back up in a similar fashion and just add more of the same colors in. But if it just kind of overall, it's, it's dyed, but just the pattern didn't come out the way you wanted it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to put another little section on here. So I'm doing one of those little offshoots. So I'm just kind of gathering this fabric up here. And I'm just going to kind of wad it up right here at the base, right where I'm at here. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to go and tie that little noggin up. <clears throat> and that'll just add another little shape within my design here. So I tied this one extra little noggin on there and now what I'm going to do, the main thing I try to make sure is that I don't get other parts of the tapestry folded up in there. So when I'm picking this up moving around I'm trying to make sure that I have just the, the bottom here. So what I'm going to do now is go out and wrap around the whole bottom here again because we're going to continue this down. This is still just the one big geode here. So I just made an extra little shape on there. So we're just continuing this down. Like I say, I'm going to try and take up this whole corner here. Looks like I'm going to engulf the heart within this one also. So that'll be fun. So we just engulfed the heart into this geode here. So like I say, I'm just continuing to go down. So we got one little spin off of here. And I'm just going to take this all the way down here until we get closer. But I think I'm going to go off to the side here. Oh, I got another heart to tie in there. So, well, we're going to go off this direction. That's the other nice thing about this is you can alter your course and all it takes is just by gathering a little bit of fabric so when I'm here at the base here what I can do is just gather a little bit of fabric so I'm heading over in this direction here and then as I tie this in then I can just keep adding more from this direction and just keep feeding my geode over in that direction my the last heart that I was going to put in there and this time we're just going to leave that up at, as the tip and we're just going to then work our geode down from that so I'm just kind of bunching up a little bit of the fabric just so that I have a little bit more of a odd shape to it out here and then we're just going to start tying and go down from there
We're getting closer around here, so I'm kind of running out of areas to tie up within these geodes, so I'm going to start bunching up some more of this fabric here and just tying it off into smaller little geodes here. And that's usually what I do with these. I just sometimes you can go with the plan and start from one side and work your way across, but I'm more of a random geode tire. I like the the randomness and the spontaneity and I like how the universe helps in there sometimes. I'll get a random spot or fold in there someplace and so I take it to be the, the universe's contribution to my art if I can do that. In this case I'm going to just jump right over so I instead of cutting this off on this short little geode I got more bunch fabric here so I'm just kind of jumping over tying that up. I try to make sure that I don't have too much fabric wadded in there at once so I can see separations. So this here is just going to put a few little geodes in the same area here. The one thing I always struggle with on the geodes is how to get dye to go on here because I, I usually will apply a little bit of dye to the fabric and then I put some dye over top of the ice. So it's a matter of getting all of the geodes to lay flat. So I usually will kind of get them all arranged and then I'll wrap them with a little bit of kite string. So that's probably what we'll do here. I think I, I don't need to wrap that up anymore. I think we're just going to move right on. So this is just one of my ways of doing this. I usually will kind of try to get all of the the geodes laying flat in some way so that I can sprinkle dye on them and then get the, the ice put on. So kite string is the way that I usually will do that. But I know this is not required. Once again, this is just my own way that I've found that works good for me. But you could just go just like this here and put your dies on, put your ice on if you wanted to. But for me, I just I like to have it a little bit more contained. So I will wrap this up and then we'll get the tub over here and start putting some dye on. Reynolds wrap for tying my things up a little bit, building my walls for my ice and stuff. I don't have any professional method for doing this. I just kind of wrap it up however works for me. So I'm just kind of wrapping this around the T here and just making sure that I still have access to all of my parts here. Part of it is going to be underneath but I'm, I'm not wanting to block all the dye so I didn't wrap it all the way underneath. I want the dye to have room to, to go out the bottom here. Um, you can use all different kinds of things. I've, I've used cardboard walls to build up. Uh, this basically is so that I can put my dies on and then I can stack ice up here. So that's what you want to use this for. Uh, but people have used all sorts of different things for how they build their walls up for their ice. Tin foil is just one of the things that I've found that I like because I can mold it and bend it however I like to around whatever shape I'm working on. Wrap it in 
sitting in there like a burrito or something. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, part of it I'm not going to be able to talk as much while I'm putting the, the powders on because I'm going to be wearing my handy dandy mask here just because of the dust. Uh, a lot of times I will do the ice dyeing outside but since we're doing a video we have to do it inside. And what I'm going to do is maybe I'll just set my rack under here. I will try to do it in the tray so that you guys can still see. And I'll tip this down. I like to have my tin foil thing built up before I put my dies on because I've done it before. I put all my dies on and then start building my tin foil and then you're dumping dies and so anyways but I'll try to keep this as open as possible so you guys can see what I'm doing. But I'm just I don't have a, an exact procedure. Like I say I like the randomness so I just take little scoops of my different colors and I sprinkle them on and like I say um, on this one big one here this is the one that we started I'm gonna put just a little bit of the ultraviolet so that we know which one that is but then on the rest of these I'm using three different colors four different colors of green let's see if we can move things around here and I got Chocolate brown, truffle brown, and bronze. And then for my greens, I have, and these are all, all Dharma colors here. For my greens, I have forest, moss, sage, and then aqua. So I'm just going to randomly put them on. I try to get the different colors, some colors on different parts of the geodes just to put different colors in. So here, that's where you can see on these. This is another one that I, I dyed in the same fashion. So you can see the different color ranges in here. Some of them have darker colors and some of them have more greeny colors. So this here, I imagine, is going to come out in a similar type fashion. So let's get set up here. i got to tuck this beard away in my shirt so I can put my mask on. And then, like I say, I'm going to start scooping dye and dumping it on here so I can't talk too much while I'm doing the, this part. And then when I get ready to put the ice on, I'll take this back off and we'll do some more dye on top of the ice. Oh, and also, I soaked, I did a pre-soak in soda ash, the tapestry, but whenever I do ice dye, I always like to make sure that I add a little bit extra soda ash. So. I will be putting some of that on as well. So we're just going to go for it now.
So there is the, well over there, is the geode ice dyed tapestry. So I'm going to let that ice melt. I'll probably do a little bit of recording of that just to add into the other video just and do some time lapse on the ice melting. But once that's all done melting then I'm going to let it batch for 48 hours and then after that of course I'll wash it. I'll do a reveal video for it 